Christina Gale here and I did a Freaky Fast Friday layout a week or two ago and I had such a great response and if you watch me for any length of time you know this is my favorite challenge anymore and I think I got some of you guys fired up and wanted to try it too so I thought I would do another one. I got a little bit behind when I was going to school so this is from March. This is part of the flavors of the month. And if you're interested in this, I do believe there's some still in the store. So you can check out the links down below at the scrap room and still pick up this kit. This is American Crafts Oh Lovely Day. And I have the paper. I have embellishments that go with it. There's the sticker sheet. I have some chipboard stickers, puffy stickers, tickets. And then I pulled out some of the other embellishments from the embellishment add-on kit. So some of these are from it. There were some jewels that went with actually one of the other ones, um, some wood veneer. So just a few little things. I'll show you real quick the paper. So this one's a fun little um, loose polka dot with a floral, the hot air balloons, the back sides, this gorgeous watercolor, and I'm going to try to use both sides of this paper because I love it. This one, that's kind of a peachy color with triangles and some hand-drawn watercolored triangles on the back. This blue, loosely drawn plaid, and I love these little foxes, so I think I'm going to try that as well. Some roses watercolored, and then a chevron watercolor painted, and the back side's the dark pink with the blue. And then there was some blue cardstock in the kit. I think this is denim. So this is what I'm working with today. I'll put in the slide here for the different measurements that I'm looking at and then kind of walk you through again how I would think about it. So I have not studied on this or anything. I've just pulled my kit out and I'm just now looking at the dimensions. So I always start with the biggest, which is a 10 by 10. And I like something that's not too busy like that big balloon would be harder for me to work with it could work but it's not what I automatically go to so I would automatically go to something tone on tone like this um, but I'm actually thinking about this chevron and doing it since it's a 10 by 10 it could be bordered with the blue cardstock so I'm liking that next biggest one is 6 by 8 and I really love these hot air balloons and that watercolor. So I said I definitely wanted to use it. So I'm thinking that would be a great 6x8 because it's not too much of the background, but, you're, but you want it big enough that you're going to be able to actually see the hot air balloons and know what they are. So if I used it for one of the smaller pieces, you wouldn't be able to tell that. The next biggest is a 6x4, which I told you last time, I automatically always think kind of photo mat or going behind the photo. So that may be where I pull that watercolor in, and I may just use the blue, since this is leaning to, towards the teal. These are the photos that I pulled out, so they're of my son when he was quite small, just some random shots of him throughout the day. So I'm thinking, keeping with the blue, really like this dark blue as well. And that would look good in a six by four. So it'd be one of the others. And then the rest are one by 11 and a half inch by 12, which that half inch by 12, that's a branding strip. So I may pull this one in. Um, I really like that branding strip. And then a 2 by 3 which I always kind of think it could be used as a journaling spot. But when I was looking through the embellishments, there was something that caught this Just Be Cool because he's just running around in a diaper, evidently very, very hot that day. And that's pretty close to a 2 by 3 I don't think it's quite... I'll measure. If it's not 2 by 3 I think I'm going to cut a 2 by 3 and then put that over the top of it as an embellishment. So I want to keep that in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these bigger pieces and then we'll figure out the smaller ones. Okay, so I've cut all my pieces and I pretty much did what I said. I loved the chevron so I did the large 10 by 10. That 6 by 8 I cut it where it would go vertical so we could see a lot of the pattern. 
I chose the dark blue because I really wanted that really stark contrast between the other colors and for my photos to stand out. So if I had done my photos on a busy background, they kind of get lost. Also, these are really old photos, so they're, they're not bright and vibrant, and there's nothing in them. I mean, it's just him. So when you put it on the white and everything, they really wash out, and they're, um, they're not really the focal point. For the borders, I wanted that fox, so I went ahead and used that as my half inch by 12. Then for the one inch by 11, again, I wanted something darker, but I wanted a small print so that I could pull all of those colors back together again. So I chose this floral, and I've also pulled out my scallop punch, and I'm going to punch the bottom of this. Um, you can see, if I'd used this side, it's white, it kind of gets lost, so it wasn't really a good choice. I thought about doing this blue watercolor paper, um, the one, this one, um, but you can tell it's kind of a different color of blue, and so if I'd used it all along here, it's going right up against this and this, and I didn't really care for it. It looked like it didn't belong, it wasn't part of the collection, but for a small piece, I thought it went okay. If it's just tucked up in here, then, you know, it's against this. So I guess what I'm saying is I'm going to have it where it touches this background piece so it really pulls it in and it looks like the collection. Whereas if it was just with these pieces, it doesn't quite gel as well. So these are the pieces that I cut. Um... I also, I had said that I'd thought about cutting this um, 4 by 6 with this. That would be the same reason that I didn't choose to do it, because against this, it was lost, and there wasn't enough contrast. It didn't look like it went really well with it, so that's another reason why um, I went with the dark blue instead of this one on the 4 by 6 I think that's the only thing that I really changed up. For laying these out... I, can, I, I wanted to show you what I thought about instantly because I said normally I just start laying the pieces down and it just goes um, how it stays. Um, I usually do not change it. But those layouts are very classic, um, go-to designs, can't go wrong with them. I mean, it's just going to be pleasing to the eye. So I was going to show you that, and then I'm going to try to mix it up and show you how you can kind of go outside of the normal um, laying it out. So normally I would frame this piece of paper on the blue. So I would just center it, have an inch border all the way around. Then I'm down to this piece and I would put it to one side or the other and probably leave a little bit of border. Might move it up there. Um, something like that. Since I know my photos are going on this side, then I'll just pretend that's that's the way I'm going to do it. So I would probably, I'm going to have a little bit less at the top than I would at the bottom, I think. And then for my photo mat, or for the 4x6, since I have that, probably my first thought would be to go ahead and somehow frame that and put this here, which looks good. Then I have that, which I was thinking about using journaling as a journaling block. So it could go there, but since it's pretty close to the same size as my photo. Kind of not my best choice, so I probably would poke it up underneath somehow like this. Um, but again, making sure that it's touching this paper over here. So I probably would do something like that. And probably pull that in side of this paper so that this comes over further. And I would make sure that's up underneath that somehow. And then my borders, normally your choices are across the bottom here with your photos or something like this would be nice, but since my design is going this direction, then I would put it like this. Um, and with this one, I would probably go up underneath there and I would keep it as a shelf for these photos. So this photo would be sitting on top of it this one's not necessarily, but where he's standing kind of looks like it. And then this one I would butt up underneath that. That's how I typically would probably lay that out. Just very classic, clean, 
scrapbooking, which is uh, normally my style. So if that's yours, then this is definitely one way that you could lay those out. But let's pick them up, mess around, and see what other ways that we could come up with. Just to give you something a little out of the box in case you want to stretch yourself. One thing I like to do with large pieces of paper like this is you can push it to the top like that. Push around or down here or even keeping it kind of to the, the center top and bottom but moving it to one side or the other. So I think that's what I'm going to do or try at least anyways. Let's keep it about the same top and bottom but pushed over to the left hand side. And then this one you could still kind of build it the same way that we did before but I think I want to offset it and fill in more of this background and put that over here. Um, this is still pretty much going to have to go as a shelf across the page because of the design. And like I said, if, if the foxes weren't on there, it was like a floral print or something, then you definitely could put it vertical up behind there. And instead of this being like a photo mat, I'm wondering, putting it, I think I want it over that. Let's see. Just looking. I want to make sure that I'm on the quadrants somehow in the in the photo. So this one I want on that line there. Hmm. And then I still have this piece. Nope, I want to keep it against this. And I had said originally that I wanted to put this one sticker just to be cool on it and I measured it and it's the right width it's two inches so it's the exact same width but it's not quite three inches so I couldn't use it in there if I do it on here I'm gonna have to put it where some of the blue shows so I could still use it as a title and stick it there um, just I like everything except for this dark blue I need to figure out something else If I could still do the same thing as I did earlier, except for again, I'm getting well, it's not so bad because it matches this blue in here, so that might possibly work, but I wouldn't be using that on top of it, which would be okay. Um, I'm kind of wishing I could see more of the hot air balloons. wondering since all of that's kind of shifting off shifting this piece where it goes over the edge as well instead of like I had it almost centered in the page but I think I like it better over that okay so I think that's one other way that you could do it and then with the embellishments and titles that could look really good so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down and then we'll start embellishing for the embellishing, I wanted to start with the title, and if you follow me, you know that titles are just not my strong suit. I always feel like I'm so uncreative when it comes to titles, and here lately, I have just been using the embellishments to create my title, and this one is no different. So I knew I wanted to use that Just Be Cool, but it didn't really work because it's the same size as the photo and everything, but I found it on the ticket in kind of this rose gold, and with it being horizontal, it looked so much better. So I used it, and then that yellow word, literally, was perfect because he's holding the yellow sippy cup, and there's just little touches of yellow, 
in the pattern paper, so I really wanted to pull that around into the three embellishment areas, and with that title, um, it really made it pop. Then I was just looking for other things that I could use to build up the embellishment clusters, and these little tickets, there were three of them that just have journaling lines on them, and they had words, but I tucked those up underneath the paper so that you wouldn't see them and just have the lines. So I'm going to put three of those on there. I have the two so far, the top and bottom, and then I'm going to add another one behind the Just Be Cool. And I'm going to actually put just a little bit, just one little sentence on that one. Then I knew I wanted to use that Fox Puffy sticker, and so he went right there in the center spot. And I wanted to really add in the other fox that's just on the paper sticker sheet, but it really kind of looked goofy. It's the exact same fox, just bigger. So instead, I chose the other two animals that are on the puffy stickers, the little hedgehog and the bunny, and worked those in. And just super cute. I also was disappointed that more of the hot air balloons was not showing up on the background. So I chose that sticker sheet to go up, or that sticker icon to go up behind the title to really emphasize the hot air balloons. And then I'm just going to finish it off by choosing some of the hearts. And I'm just looking at the colors, trying to um, get the different colors in each one of the cluster areas and around. So I added that yellow heart to finish that yellow triangle. And that's pretty much it. Here are some close-ups. Be sure to come over to the scrap room and try out the Freaky Fast Friday Challenge. I'd love to have you over there. Tag me so that I know when you play along. And I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you soon.